So without further ado, <laughs> let's get to question number one. Where did we meet? So last year in March, I came up to see the University of Ottawa. I had a friend at Carlton, so she asked me to come by to her residence to hang out. And while I was on her floor, uh, I stumbled upon this beautiful boy. And I guess you could say the sparks flew. So that's kind of how we met. Cool. All right. Hi, my name is Michael, and I have been in a relationship with my partner Chris for five years, five great years. We have had lots of ups, lots of downs, and lots of memories in between. Today, we are actually going to be interviewing each other. So say hello to my partner Chris. Hi guys. Are you nervous? <laughs> it feels like we're having a really, really personal discussion in front of the internet, so. I'll start this whirlwind of questions off. Um, what did you think of me when we first met? I thought you were edgy. At the time you had eyebrow piercing, yeah, had, uh, ear piercings, and you kind of like didn't have upkept hair at the time. Rag me, why yeah, don't you? Yeah. you just, I totally thought you were so edgy and that was exactly what I was looking for at the time. <laughs> we moved in together two years ago, over two years ago actually now, May of 2016. What was like the most annoying thing I did as a roommate when we first moved. Because we, we butted heads when we first moved yeah. in together. Like, I... we fought at least every day for three weeks. You're gonna hate that I'm saying this, but you were not the cleanest when we moved in together. No, I wasn't. So I had to like almost train you to, to clean naturally. Yeah. Yeah, when we first moved in, I definitely retreated to like, you'll take care of that and you'll yeah. take care of that and you'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. And now whenever friends of mine are telling me like they're moving in with, with their significant other, I'm just like, Oh God, yeah. oh God, get ready for that like initial impact. I felt like we got married. Oh, for sure. And I, I felt like we got married. I remember trying to move in with you two years into our relationship. Everyone was like, that's a terrible idea. And I was like, no, we're so ready for it. And looking back on it now, I think that we survived how difficult moving in with someone is because of how long we waited. Okay, we're getting into the serious questions now. Okay. What is the worst thing I've ever done to you? We've had actually so many conversations about this where We've mutually apologized for things, especially yeah. almost like a bulk kind of things that are early on in our relationship. We were 18 years old. We were 18. We didn't we were... know how to treat each other with respect. I think when we got to a point in our relationship, we weren't necessarily afraid to lose each other. I think that's when things improved because we could communicate our thoughts. I agree. Oh my other. god, that's such a good, such a good like comment. I was I, I was afraid to lose you for for a big portion of our relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, and we would and we would let things slide as a result of being afraid of losing the other person. So I think we I think we like, both I think we both did some pretty shitty things to each yeah. other, like in the context of us. Yeah, I don't know what that means to other people, but at least to us, we used to argue a lot. Like I I remember thinking back to the first maybe even second year of us dating, and I remember thinking to myself. Wow, like the fighting hasn't slowed down, but we wouldn't argue about big things. Like it wouldn't be yeah. like, like you know what I mean? Like they, they weren't huge relationship problems. They were like really finicky, small things and we would never let the small things go. See, I think both of us had big egos and we had, not, not necessarily big egos, but we had a lot of pride in ourselves. We have a really good way of being like, okay, we're fighting, neither one of us want to fight, let's take a step back. I think that we didn't possess that earlier on in our relationship, but definitely developed that. Um, so after five years, do you still get jealous or insecure? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. When? Um, for, from things you do, no, I don't get jealous. Insecure? I think I've always like battled with my insecurities, but I think I've gotten a lot better with them over the past year. So in our relationship, we have explored um, polyamory, openness, non-monogamy, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's something that specifically we used to frown upon a lot earlier on in our relationship. So what changed? I would say that we both kind of realized that something was missing, but we were aware that it wasn't missing because of who we were. It was just something that would naturally occur for us. I think we were missing, I think after a few years we, we're missing a sense of excitement mm -hmm. because we started dating so young. And I don't think that non-monogamy just happens when you're just start like dating young, but it was something that I think I immaturely understood as like something you do when you just, you don't want to break up with the person, but you still mm -hmm. want to have sex with other people mm -hmm. or you want to have sexual relations with other people. Yeah. And I think that I kind of learned 
how it could be incorporated in a relationship to make the relationship stronger. Mm -hmm. I think we were looking for something that was exciting and it took us a long time. It took us about two years to fully get to a point where we were comfortable yeah. incorporating non-monogamy. We had plenty of nights oh, that did not end well because of insecurities, of jealousy, yeah. of not communicating properly. Absolutely. I think it's interesting because I think that in the, the you know, the queer space, I think that non-monogamy is much more common or at least much more discussed yeah and therefore uh stigmatized m more intensely by by people i have developed a perspective of of you as my boyfriend but also as my partner in so many more personal sense i think that i don't look at you as my possession that's yeah. a weird thought but it's a thought that i think even i had at one point like we yeah. don't think we don't think our partners are our possession but we kind of do, kind of do. because yeah. when they want to do something you're like that you can't that's for me and you can't do yeah. that you feel restricted you know yeah. like that's I, I think that's why we got into a lot of rifts in our relationship i think that's why a lot of other people get in rifts in their relationships do you ever worry that we're settling too fast getting a dog <laughs> i had yeah. a family dog growing up and right and sh you know she's still alive and she's i think she's like seven at this point i know what that looks like what those years look like and that's an investment you surprised me with the dog yeah i did not <laughs> i surprised you with the dog yeah but you know it was a conversation with myself can we really invest mm. 10 years, and I guess, you know, there's conversations about like, okay, if the relationship doesn't work out, one of you just takes the dog, it's not that big of a deal. It has forced me to have those conversations with myself about are we settling too young? We're 24, we've been dating for, for five years now, we met when we were 18. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it back. I think I've learned a lot more from the downs we've had than the ups. I think slowly over time, my platforms have grown and that's taken away a lot of privacy. Has that really affected you? Or do you think that's really affected our relationship? You would put, upload a photo of us online and people would comment things like, wow, he's so fat, or you could do so much better. And uh, I think I quickly realized what the internet was and wasn't. I think I realized that it's just a lot of people yelling at each other um, and that ne don't necessarily know what they're talking about. Uh, so I kind of just, I learned how to not care what people thought because of your social media. I would definitely say that at, at, the, at there were certain points in our relationship where I was like, I can't do this. I. I can't deal with this issue and not talk about it. I remember there was a period where I was moving back from Peru. I had lived in Peru for a few months and your online presence was really taking off at this time. And I was so insecure within myself that I just didn't need that extra exposure. And that, that was a time where I was like, I really can't see myself doing this long term. So we have changed so much since the beginning of our relationship. Yeah. What would you say hasn't changed? <laughs> It hasn't changed mm -hmm. our immature sense of humor. We do lots of imitations, mm -hmm. and sometimes oh my we just, god, sometimes we just dance in the apartment, or we remix songs and use our names instead of we words. We remix songs. <laughs> we, we remix so many songs. If we broke up. What would never be the same? I don't think we could have the same kind of relationship if we moved on to different partners. I think we would hold back a lot of ourselves. I agree. It takes a lot to let someone into your whole life, all of your insecurities, all of the dark side, all of the childhood trauma you may have went through. Um, that's a lot to unpack on someone and a lot for yourself to unpack. So I don't think I could do that again with someone else. That's, that, that'd be tough. I agree. That'd be tough. I agree. All right. Do you want to do the outro with me? Sure. Come on in. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learn a little bit about our relationship. And if you'd like to follow us on social, our links are right here. They're on the screen so you can see them. Uh, I love you guys. Make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, and most importantly, smile. Smile. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Usually we just run into the camera thing, so we're going to do it quickly. Make sure